after hours and hours of work, completely rebuilding every single nut and bolt and gasket on this engine, it's finally time to put it back in the frame. Hi, I'm Dom, and welcome to my workshop. There is an awful lot that could go wrong here. <laughs> the Vespa frame was in such bad condition. This is this whole point here is really, really structural. It's where the engine bolts, it's the main pivot point for the engine, and it's all where this main tunnel, that's all the strength of the frame is. And unfortunately, that was completely rotten. <laughs> Literally, it was all gone. I had very, very few points of reference to actually get all this piece back together again. It all looks good, and it lines up as best as I can measure. This big bolt goes through this side of the frame. There's two rubbers in here with this bar through there, they have to line up, has to come out the other side, and then if everything, and all my welding and my maths has been okay, been, right that should line up out come out the other side of the frame as i said there's a lot that could go wrong okay here goes nothing oh dad it's gonna work hang on can you tap that with a hammer Wow. Well, I never thought that was gonna be easy, but my goodness, that was harder than I thought, really. Yeah, I'm just hanging the Vespa frame over the edge of a workbench. I mean, if I had the proper frame support to hold it, it probably would have been easier. But hey, it's in, bolted up, the rear shock's in, the bolt's through, all my measurements and everything lined up, that main bolt that holds the engine in place has gone through perfectly. So I really couldn't be happier. Now it's actually hanging there. The next job I'm gonna do is rebuild the rear brake, put the rear brake, the rear drum on, then I can get the wheel in place and then move up to the front. Back in plate, cleaned, sandblasted, repainted. It should sit on there nicely. Nice. I put a tiny bit of thread lock on those as well, because I don't want them coming off inside the hub. When you put your foot on the back brake, that's the lever that moves. That's the, what the cable pulls, so it pulls this around. Got to be careful, my greasy, grubby fingerprints. You don't really want to be touching that brake surface with my greasy fingers. And this is the difficult bit. So at the moment, there's this, these brake shoes are in, but they're flapping around. So they're kind of working, but this is the spring that holds them both together, holds the tension, basically. Nice. When you put your foot on the brake pedal, it pulls the cable, and that turns this cam. See, it's got that flat bar. There you go. As you pull the cable, it pushes the shoes out. Only a tiny bit, nowhere near that much. As they get pushed out, they rub against the drum. Nice. And then if I hold that on, the brake shoes get pushed out. I can't move it. Brilliant, that is all working perfectly. It's a big moment now, and I may well be taking this back off because it's gonna get in the way, but I just wanna get it on because it's exciting. Oh, 
Oh, this is so exciting. My goodness. Finally putting the wheels on. Wow. <laughs> Our wheel bolt off. This is so it's so exciting. It looks so smart. It's so nice to see it. I've kept the original little eight-inch wheels. It's quite common to replace them with the ten-inch bigger ones for better brakes and you know better stability. But I just think these little things look so nice on the little eight-inch wheels. It's awesome. Confession time. I've been a bit stupid. It just reminds me when I was, I think I was maybe 16, 17, I had my first car, was a VW Beetle living at my parents' house. I rebuilt the engine, well, I built my first, that was my first ever engine, and I rebuilt it in my bedroom. All the parts, gathered all the bits, cleaned everything, similar to what I'm doing with the Vespa. I rebuilt it all in my bedroom on my little desk there. Got to the end of the engine rebuild and then realized it was too big to fit out the doorway and I couldn't get it downstairs. I've done something similar here. The engine is in, yes. Brilliant news. That is bolt fully bolted in, the rear shock is in, it's all in there and ready to go. And you can see I'm now in wiring diagram hell at the moment. That's not going very well. The main problem is I really want to get the front end. On the front end, the forks, the shocks, the whole mud guard and the wheel is all completely built, ready to go. All I literally need to do is put the bearings in and slot that in. I was gonna start that and then I thought, hang on a second. This is now really heavy and it's precariously balanced on the side of the bench. If I put the front end as well, with the engine in, it's too heavy. I can't pick it up and I'm here in lockdown in the workshop on my own and now I've got the scooter sitting on the bench with the engine in and everything in there and I can't lift it to get it off. So I'm gonna to have to get creative this morning and try and get this off and on a stall or on a bench or something else because I don't know how I'm gonna do this but I've got myself in a bit of a situation. Up my ladder again. Next bit, here we go. Here's the front end, and here's my useful diagram again to try and get it in there. This is a big moment. This is the front end. I've actually got it resting on two different stalls now, so it's getting a little bit more precarious, but the front end is going in. Look at that. This is such a good moment, I'm so chuffed. You can almost just imagine me on that, doing a huge wheelie outside the workshop. <laughs> Look at it. It looks like it's about to take off. Oh, I can't wait to ride this thing. Looking like a scooter again. I'm so chuffed. Okay, I've got another locking nut to put on the top. If I can manhandle it off of these two stalls, might be able to get it on the floor this evening. Well, that's it. Look, it's on the floor. Brilliant. Look at that, shocks moving, working good. Front end, nice. Let's see if I can get this center stand down. Nice, oh yeah. That front wheel's just off the floor, perfect. It looks brilliant, I'm so chuffed. Look at that Vespa, back on its wheels. Morning everyone, hope you're okay. It's a new day, coming in the morning. I was quite late last night, I was still here. I pulled it into the middle of the workshop. Only problem is now, I've got to try and tackle all of this and look at the mess I'm in. I've got wiring diagrams everywhere. I've got a whole new wiring loom and I've converted the uh, ignition system to 12 volts just to make it a little bit more usable. So, you know, it will start a bit better, the headlights will be a bit brighter, just bring it up to date a little bit and trying to get that 12 volt ignition system working with the loom that I've got, which I don't think is the right loom because it doesn't match any of the four wiring diagrams that I've currently got. But everyone I speak to says something different and I'm just here trying to muddle my way through this disaster. But because there's no battery, so you can't just turn the ignition on and press the horn and turn the headlights on to see if it works. The engine needs to be running to generate the electricity, a bit like a dynamo on your bike, when you used to put the little dynamo on your bike tire. When, when that spins, the headlights come on. It's very similar, but with the engine. Just gotta wire everything up, kickstart it and see if it starts. But then there's so many things that could go wrong. I don't really know, but this is where I am at the moment. Here's the ignition system. And then these wires come up through here 
Does that look right? Because <laughs> I don't know. One red and white wire left coming out the engine that I, I don't know where I need. I don't think I need that, to be honest, because I haven't got a battery, but hey, unknown at the moment. A couple of wires in here. Not sure where they go. And then that, the regulator side, I've got that figured out, I think. And then all I've got to do is try and figure out up here on the hand on the hand controls, there's obviously the horn, headlights, all the hand controls for all of that. That as well, go somewhere in the headset. This has been the thing that's making me the most nervous through the whole restoration, I'm so worried. Wiring is really not my strong point. So I'm just gonna be here for the next few hours, probably days, just trying to work my way around this wiring. Wish me luck.